Good evening. I'm Ronald Wick, and we are very pleased to bring you a special edition of Hard Fire. We are going to attempt a live call-in show, which we trust will bring out the best in everybody. My guest is Mark Roberts, the, uh, the man who knows more about the events of 9-11 than anyone. He uh, may disagree with me, but trust me, it's true. So until we get our first call, um, I think I should begin by pointing out something that bothers me, so it must bother you. People who uh, accuse us of uh, parroting the so-called government line, I often wonder what they think we get out of it. In other words, if I thought that George Bush and Dick Cheney masterminded the deaths of 3,000 civilians, why on earth would I want them to get away with it? Yeah, and me not being a Bush supporter, and, yeah, uh, and most Republicans these days not being Bush supporters, um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a not far left winger, but I'm left of center and, and usually vote <laughs> Democrat. Um, so I get accused of constantly of being an actual government agent. Yeah, and, it's kind of crazy, so, though. So that would know? be something I would, I would yeah. be getting out of it, a paycheck, I guess, from the government. And I haven't had one yet. I know they're slow, but are they that slow in paying? Well, I told you there is that problem that all my NWO <laughs> money is going to a Mexican wrestler. I, 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 it, it makes me sick. I I'm don't gonna, even want to get into it. your very first comment, though. I don't, I don't uh, claim to know more about 9-11 than any, anybody. I think uh, someone like Mike Williams, who runs 911myths.com. Mike knows a lot. I'm in awe of him. Yeah, he certainly um, knows a lot. People should go to his site. Um, anytime you have a question about 9-11, uh, I forget often that that's the first place to go. You can waste a lot of time uh, in doing the research that he's already done. There are terrific resources out there on the uh, JREF forums. We have so many bright people. I, I exclude myself. Uh, the brilliant NASA uh, engineer, Ryan Mackey, has written a comprehensive point-by-point -point refutation of uh, David Griffin's chapter on the NIST report in his latest book. Uh, Mackey's, uh, Mackey's work will be available soon. Uh, I was hoping to uh, provide uh, some kind of link to it, but I, I don't have that right now. I mean, yeah, that's great news. He's, he, I've learned more from him uh, alone than from anybody else about 9-11. About He's an almost infinitely patient explainer. He has a gift for exposition. Who, people who yeah. have almost infinite uh, ability to, uh, to not understand and, uh, and, and really knows his stuff and knows what science is and how it should be done. Um, doesn't uncritically accept things that the NIST report says, um, but explains what's in it, which most people can't do uh, better than anybody I've seen, uh, and explains it how they arrived at their conclusions better than anyone I've ever seen, particularly people at NIST. Oh, we seem to have a caller. Hello, welcome to Hard Fire. Hey, hello, hi, we got some interference. Can, how are we doing? Can you hear me? Hey, how you doing, Mark? This is Paul Isaac. How are you? Hi, Paul. How are you doing? Uh, so far, so good. How's your evening tonight? Doing good. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. I, I uh, just picked up. On, I just picked up on the show. I'm sorry. I'm just uh, looking at the delay. It's kind of a distraction. But uh, I wanted to say hello to Mark Roberts. I remember you from uh, 14th Street, and uh, the firehouse uh, contacted me, let me know that you showed him that uh, video. Did you show it to him? I'm sorry. The video. Remember, we were supposed to meet up at Engine Ten, Ladder Ten. Oh, Engine Ten. Yeah, I, I wasn't there the next the next week, as yeah. I said I might be. That was yeah. I was there during the uh, the Deutsche Bank fire. I was on the mall, I was on the wall with the flag. Wow. The flag when the fire was, I thought you guys. Uh, we were supposed to meet up over there. When are we going to set up? Sure. You want to go? You want to go next week? Uh, yeah. Let's let's uh, let's do uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, that weekend is best for me, actually. Okay. Uh, Saturday. How's that? Sure. All right, uh, same time at uh, Ground Zero, right? Sure. Pa Paul, why don't you tell people who you are exactly? I'm an auxiliary fireman, auxiliary lieutenant. I used to serve out of Engine 10, Ladder 10 before 9-11. I served in Engine 294 before that, and I was with Engine 207 as an auxiliary firefighter. Paul, do you have a, a particular 9-11 story that you'd like to share with us? Well, I, I got there late on 9-11. I caught the North Tower. I was on a Broadway in Park Row when it collapsed. 
And, uh, you know, we, we lost a lot of good people that day. And the fact that the government stalled as long as it did to get a proper investigation done with the 9-11 Omission Commission, uh, you know, there were a lot of statements by Giuliani that wasn't in the book. And there needs to be a proper investigation. I'm, I'm neither here nor there with the issue of 9-11. I'm not anti-government. I just believe that a proper investigation needs to be done on behalf of the people that we lost. Okay, Paul, I'm going to I'm going to take objection to one thing you said there, though, which is that which is that it took a long time for this 9/11 Commission report uh, investigation to happen. Uh, the 9/11 Commission was basically a summary of most of the investigations that had already taken place. Uh, as soon as the first plane hit the first tower investigations began. It was the largest criminal investigation by far in history. Right, um, but there was, le there was more money spent on the Monica Lewinsky investigation than there was on the 9-11 investigation. You're talking about the 9-11 Commission report. Right, and the which fact that Giuliani's statement wasn't in the book about Tripod and the fact that Pier 92 was already being staffed by OEM shows that there was an, invest there was a, uh, an investigation that was not conducted properly. Well, I'm not sure that that makes a lot of sense. There was a, a, an anti-terrorism, bioterrorism drill scheduled for September 12th. And uh, so some of the, the FEMA people and other, other people who were going to be involved in that uh, uh, were arriving the day before. Um, and that was the, the area they were going to use for that was used as a staging area for some of the operations on after September 11th. Don't see anything suspicious there. But I do want to correct you again that the 9-11 Commission report is not the investigation. They did a lot of investigating. They did a lot of interviewing of people. But the criminal investigation was done by law enforcement agencies, intelligence agencies, and it was a massive investigation and extremely thorough. Yeah, we, we see an inconsistency when it comes to the law enforcement aspect because the Osama bin Laden webpage, uh, 10 Most Wanted, doesn't list anything about 9-11. It's yeah, he's not. Well, that's because the, the most wanted people are under indictment. Bin Laden isn't considered to be, uh, for one, the main planner of 9/11. But he was the financier. Uh, no, he, he was not. He, no, no, Paul, he was not the financier. Uh, there's no evidence that Bin Laden gave mm -hmm. money to uh, uh, support the 9/11 attacks. Nor was his money needed. The Al Qaeda had a budget at the time of around thirty million dollars. Right, but um, we were also influenced into the war in Iraq, stating that nine eleven was connected to Iraq, and this was done by the president oh, of the United States. I, I, and then he refuted that charge. Well, I I agree with you there. I'm totally opposed to nine eleven being used as uh, uh, as a, a fear kind of thing to get us into a war in Iraq against people who did not attack us. So I'm, I'm, I also I'm, look at the historical event of the Reichstag incident where we had the Enabling Act, we had the, the Fatherland Security, and we had a blind war on terror. And here after 9-11, we have the same circumstances where we have the Patriot Act, we have the war on terror, and we now have Homeland Security. Three well, very not, similar we're not, incidents. We're not living in Hitler's Germany, though. Do you think, do you think that, that things have gotten to that extent? Uh, as far as the libraries are concerned, believe me, you are continuously under surveillance at the library. Well, I mean, the uh, Jews aren't being dragged out and, and murdered. Well, the uh, Brooklyn Public Library was shown prior to 9-11 that the alleged hijackers and the people involved in 9-11 were utilizing the library system in Brooklyn. And now we show with the Washington Post article by Mark, uh, Robert, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mark Fisher uh, <coughs> that... There was, up until 2006, individuals working in the Brooklyn Public Library praising the 9-11 attacks. We have a lot of suspicious activity occurring within the Brooklyn Public Library, and it needs to be exposed. Right now, I'm investigating it, and we have a few law enforcement individuals also looking into this matter. And believe me, there needs to be some type of investigation within this institution because there is just reckless abandonment with the giving away of library cards to people who are not showing proper identification, and this situation where we have military personnel who are losing their jobs while in service to their country because of the Brooklyn Public Library. So we can show before and after 9-11 suspicious activity within this institution. I wish you luck with that. Uh, uh, Paul, yes. I had uh, uh, one thought that I wanted to share with you. Uh, you sir. talked about uh, the FBI, uh, that they did not name Osama bin Laden as um, a, a main suspect, if the FBI were complicit 
in some sort of conspiracy, as is often alleged by the people who claim that this, these attacks were perpetrated by the government, don't you think the FBI would be on the same page with the rest of the conspiracy? Wouldn't they have bin Laden uh, wanted, dead or alive? Well, I believe that the wanted, dead or alive came after the hype hysteria after 9-11. We saw all the scarism and, you know, I find it... But well, don't you think they're legitimate Laden, fears? Bin Laden has been under, under indictment. He is on the most wanted list uh, since 1998. Right, uh, for the Dar es Salaam and, and uh, Tanzania sure, bombing. Sure, uh, So th this is a guy who is, who is a threat and who was promised to kill Americans and said that it's every Muslim's duty to kill mm -hmm. Americans. Yeah, but we started uh, him. We, we funded him. No, we didn't. No, that's, that's under the Carter administration. It's absolutely not we, true. We no, started the Afghan uh, uh, event fighting the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. We funded him. We gave him the no, we, we didn't. Uh, absolutely this, this false. false. No, it's absolutely no false. The CIA we, supported the Mujahideen. Yes, but they did not They did not fund Osama bin Laden. He refused to any aid from the Americans. He accepted aid from Saudi sources. The Afghani Mujahideen were funded by the Americans and other Western nations. The money, right. that, the, the money that we sent uh, to fund the Mujahideen uh, went to the ISI. We had no control over what Yeah, we funneled from. it through and the ISI. They, and they did not. In, they July, did, in they July of 2001, it stated that the CIA met with him at the American Hospital in Dubai in July of 2001. Uh, apparently, he's that he's story he's proved happy. false. Yeah, there's no, there's no verification of that whatsoever. The French news agency came out with it. The second uh, partner of the hospital confirmed it. No, it was, it was uh, extensively discussed on 9-11 myths, and they said there is, there is no way to verify this, and it seems unlikely that it happened. I mean, look, conspiracists have gone so far as to suggest that Osama was in this country under the name Tim Osman, which is uh, yes. complete nonsense. I mean, well, the it just never happened. You have a guy, an American Taliban guy, uh, Adam Gadam, who comes from a prominent Jewish family. That's that's extremely suspi uh, suspicious. Well, it's the fact bizarre. that no one needs to know where he's at at all. It's more than suspicious. It's you know, downright they can't bizarre. Do a internet trace on the guy. They can't find his ID. That that to me is suspicious. Yeah. And the fact that two months before 9/11, they destroyed the Keystan Master Holder tanks which were 400 feet high in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. They used illegal demolition charges within the city limits, within a residential area for two 400-foot structures. Well, actually, Paul, Paul, we've actually had this conversation before, right. you and I. Uh -huh. that, there, that was all done with permits. There were public meetings held about that. Uh -huh. Neighbors were concerned about the but damage, the possible damage to the property. there were very big safety issues involved. The fact so there was, and, and in, fact, Paul, in fact, Paul, that demolition is featured in a documentary about demolitions, where they followed the crew from Control Demolition Day. Blast, there so there's nothing secret about that. There's well. nothing secretive about well, that. no, not so much the event. The, vet, the fact that uh, Mark Lazo was the one who contacted the mayor and the Office of Emergency Management on 9-11 to warn them that the towers were going to collapse. Actually, so he, actually, he, actually he didn't get through. He, he, yeah, wanted, he was watching it on TV at home in Maryland yeah, and, and, believe that. and did because not get number through. Because, number one, the Office of Emergency Management was at the demolition two months before 9-11, and now all of a sudden he can't get through on Nextel or, or cell phone or, or landline. Uh, there was plenty of calls that were going through, and the fact that Mayor Giuliani confirmed it and then denied it shows that there is an inconsistency with Mayor Giuliani. Paul, because the, the first inconsistency, you got the warning, Paul, you left the tower, and now you didn't get the warning, and you didn't know the buildings were going to collapse. The fact that the Keystone Master Holder Tank demolition mirrors the top 400 feet of the South Tower exactly. Exactly. Except that one is a gas tank and one is a skyscraper. No, no, we're talking about the gas tanks being 400 feet high, 252 feet in width, with a square box of 270 feet, I'm sorry, 207 feet by 400 feet. Yes, there is a similarity in both the collapse pattern style collapse and the pattern. fact that the tower uh, violated the, the law of gravity. Possibly, possibly mirror a skyscraper. I, I, I mean, sorry, sorry, I didn't I, hear you. Uh, how can a gas tank mirror a skyscraper when the We're two structures are We're looking at the collapse so pattern, the style of collapse. If you see how the towers collapse and you see how the tanks collapse, it's, they, it's, bo they it's, both went it's down. Exactly Gravity. The yeah, they should not the have gone fact, up. They went. Yeah, they went the in the fact, correct direction. Yes, yeah, so the fact that Keyspan was in business with Enron 
since 1998. Uh -huh. Since you were raised a couple of hairs. An energy the company in business with another Giuliani energy company? Giuliani signed all fa uh, baseball park contracts for Keyspan, giving them a baseball park in Coney Island. Christy Todd Whitman, who said the air was clean to breathe six days after the fact, gets a baseball park called City Field through her husband in Queens. And the fact that J.P. Morgan, which is the same J.P. Morgan that Deutsche Bank nearly burnt down from, gets the new Yankee Stadium, shows that there's a connection with the Giuliani baseball contract and the so-called uh, oddities with Christy Todd Whitman and Enron. That right there was never part of the investigation. Uh, Paul, we, you know, we, and, and we appreciate the call very much, but we have only one telephone line, so we're, we're going to have to... Uh, we're going to have to interrupt you, but we thank you once again for, for calling in. Okay. I, I should apologize to anyone who's trying to call in that we anticipated having more than one line, and uh, it, it didn't work out that way. So we're going to do the best we can. Paul gave us a lot to think about. He's yes. Yes, that is certainly he's true. He's connected I, many dots. Yeah. Um, I have a he's in the History Channel uh, documentary on 9-11, which I highly recommend to people. Uh -huh. um, he's seen uh, at Union Square with a flag and a, and a firefighter's helmet. I think I there. saw that. Yeah. yeah. yeah I um, and uh, I've got a little video of him also uh, yeah. out there. I, I just have a... We have another caller. Let's see who it is. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you fine. Okay. And who are you? Hi, this is Pat from the Screw Loose Change blog. Oh, hey, welcome, Pat. Good to hear Thanks. from you. Thanks. Uh, I don't want to take up a lot of time, but I do want to congratulate you guys on all the work that you've done. Uh, you've been a terrific uh, inspiration to all of us in the debunking movement. Uh, you know, well, he, he's the man to congratulate. I mean, I'm... I don't have a TV show. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> well, well the, the two of you work together well. Uh, one question that I do have uh, for either or both of you, uh, you know, we see these polls out there that indicate, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20, maybe 30 percent of the population buys into this nonsense. And yet at the same time, when we look at the demonstrations that are out there, uh, with the exception of the one in New York on 9-11-06, on it's always kind of a minuscule crowd of, you know, maybe 5, 10 people with black shirts. Why do you think, despite the fact that supposedly there's so many people who believe in this nonsense, they can't get anybody to come out to their demonstrations? Uh, I, I ha I'll give you my quick answer, and Mark can discuss it in a little greater depth. I think if you ask people in a poll, do you think the government had something to do with the attacks of 9-11, you're going to get a whole bunch of people who don't like George Bush who will say, yes. Now, what do they really mean? They mean they don't like George Bush. They, they certainly don't think that this mathematically impossible imaginary conspiracy was planting thousands of pounds of explosives in the World Trade Center with no one noticing. They, they don't think that this, uh, again, this gigantic conspiracy is running around the world uh, not building gas pipelines and not <laughs> stealing oil from Iraq. They just don't like George Bush. So sure, they'll say to a pollster, I think the government had something to do with it. But they're certainly not willing to make the effort to join in a demonstration. Yeah, and I, I think that, the, the, for one thing, the wording of polls is really important. Some sure. of the polls that, that are referred to by the conspiracy theorists were written by them. You can commission a poll. Yeah. Um, and they're supposed to be scientific polls. But guess what? If you, if you write things in the right way, um, you can get your questions through. and uh, and that can be quite misleading. One of those polls was a Zogby poll that was on the eve of the uh, 2004 Republican National Convention in New York City when George Bush was even less popular in New York than he is right now. I was personally marching in the streets uh, in, in, in opposition to the Republicans coming to town uh, and to the war, the ongoing war. Uh, and uh, so they did the poll literally on the eve of that convention, hmm. um, which is going to get the, the, the uh, answers you expect, uh, which are overwhelmingly uh, that we don't trust our government. Sure. Um, yeah. so, so that's pretty basic. Here in New York, though, I never hear anyone talking about this issue. Uh, you're absolutely right, Pat, that, uh, that they only get a few people out to their events. And this is a city of 8 million. The metropolitan area is 22 million. Um, I've never had anyone on my tours 
uh, talk about this stuff, uh, and I've never heard, had it come up in conversation, uh, and I live right here. So yeah. where are all these people who are, who are so upset about this? Yeah. It's, it's a small group who are that upset that they're, that they're going to get out and do uh, 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 protesting, and they would be out protesting uh, something else uh, mm -hmm. that, that the Bush administration or some other political uh, cause, uh, if it weren't this. A lot mm -hmm. of them have done that in the past, sort of, sort of long-time, uh, part-time protesters. Thank you. I, I certainly agree. I think we got a brace for another one because I think that there's going to be a 911truth.org, uh, I think it is, is commissioning another poll that's going to come out in the next week or so. So we should expect another, you know, uh, uh, a bunch of, of, of chest thumping about how many people agree with these guys. Yeah. I, I would uh, like to see them ask uh, as a simultaneous poll how many people believe that the government perpetrated the attacks of 9-11 and how many people believe in the Loch Ness monster? You know, I, I think you'd see a strong correlation. <laughs> Angels and fairies. Angels are and high. fairies. Yeah. 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 I agree with you. Well, let me get off the phone here. Congratulations and thanks for all your work. And uh, I'm sure that uh, Willie Rodriguez and Kevin Ryan are hanging by, ready to call in. Yeah, we're <laughs> expecting them to call. So thanks again, Pat. Thanks, we appreciate Pat. Thanks the all, call. Thanks for all your work. Take care, guys. Good night. Well, that's an excellent blog he's got. Uh, screw, uh, the blog is uh, Screw Loose Change, and it's run by uh, Pat and James, two good guys. Visit them. Join in the, join in the discussion. Hello? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Who are you? Oh, am I live now? Yes. Okay. What I'd like to say is uh, while you, there are kooks who believe that the World Trade Center was armed with Bombs. It doesn't mean you're a kook if you believe the government allowed the attacks to happen with the intelligence that they had from East, from the Czech Republic and other sources in Europe that there was an impending attack. They did not know where, but they certainly did not do anything to uh, uh, get airport security enhanced. They allowed the attack to happen because they wanted the mandate uh, with the blind fear and patriotism to allow for the invasion, ultimate invasion of Iraq via Afghanistan. And that was I, I think you make a, a reasonable point. Full of crap. I, I think you make a reasonable point in that these attacks should have been prevented. Uh, it, it, it was I'm going to spend this whole thing with Dick Cheney. It, it, it was a huge intelligence failure, but I always have a problem with the idea that the government wanted this to happen. Why? Well, they because it, uh, it sent the economy spinning into, it, it, well, actually, it deepened the recession that was already underway. Uh, the airline industries took an enormous hit. It, it was a trillion-dollar hit on the economy, and in the nature of things, Bush got blamed for it. So the idea well, that he derived you know, benefit from where the target was. Well, there was no actionable intelligence. No. It, it, can you think of any actionable intelligence in any of those uh, either supposed warnings or the aug the August 6th? security at the airports. Well, you know, these, these warnings come in all the time. That's one problem. I mean, there had been 770 hijackings. Oh, you're full and, of crap. Well, th this is what the intelligence people say. I, I try Your not to be full of crap. They own the Congress. They own the presidency. Exxon Mobil? Why I thought it was Arbusto. Oh, right. they around? Somebody that makes fifty billion dollars a year and doesn't pay hardly any taxes. Well, then you got a problem because all these oil companies did not want Bush to go to war with Iraq. Well, what was the meeting with Cheney and the oil companies that nobody talks about that's classified for, for just before they took office? Well, all we know is that the oil companies were begging Bush and Cheney to drop the sanctions on Iraq and to do business with Saddam Hussein. They sure were. They wanted that oil legally. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't really make sense. The, the oil companies had a lot to lose and very little to gain by a war with Iraq. Now, now people... Well, who's the, pumping out three, uh, three and a half million gallons a day from Iraq now? It's actually and BP. No, actually, our, our imports from Iraq have declined. Yeah, we're doing. We're getting much less oil from Iraq now than That's we were right, before the war. They planned on a cakewalk and they didn't get it. Well, the cake, the cakewalk is the military campaign. That was easy. They thought they were going to be able to pump out six million barrels a day from Iraq, and they couldn't do it because they they misestimated the, the, what, what would happen after the the uh, 
the big, so-called victory that Bush announced. What's your What's your source on that? Huh? What's your source on that? What's my source on that? Yeah, the six million or million barrels a day out of Iraq. Well, perhaps you don't read the international press either, huh? I'm just asking you where you where you got specifically where that information is from. Well, I mean, only four percent of American oil comes from Iraq. From the CIA, yeah. big deal. And police sources are they going to expose uh, the, uh, uh, what the uh, ruling class is doing in this country? Are they going to uh, come out in favor of the working class? So, it's, is it your no. idea that 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 that? Is it your I idea? Your, I don't buy your uh, paper mache explanation of what's going on. You're papering over. You're you you know better than Bush as far as I'm concerned. All, all you're, we ask, you're all we ask, is being an apologist for uh, uh, for doing nothing. Well, we we have no reason to apologize for Bush because Bush doesn't do anything for either one of us. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a Bush apologist. All all I ask is that people present evidence for their claims. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. And uh, we do wish we had a whole hour for this. We thank you very much for the call. Uh, perhaps we can do this again sometime. I hope, every, I hope everyone uh, joining us tonight um, thought that this was an experiment worth trying. And uh, perhaps I'm being optimistic, but maybe some of you would like to see us do this again. <laughs> and if that's the case, I will certainly corral Mr. Roberts. We'll You'll be Doc Severinsen, I'll be Tommy Newsom, and we'll play Ex Stump the Band. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And you can bring that bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> yes, um, we need it. Once again, we are very, very grateful to all of you for joining us. We wish you a pleasant good night. We hope to see you again on Hard Fire. Thank you. I'm Ronald Wick. This is Mark Roberts. We look forward to seeing you again. Fire is funded in part by the Libertarian Party of New York. Catering for the cast and crew of Hard Fire is generously provided by Da Vincenzo Restaurant, 256 Prospect Park West, Brooklyn, New York, 11215, 718-369-3590, www.davincenzorestaurant.com.